Sunday for these four precious souls on the front pew today. Emmy, Parker, Audrey, and Jamie. Uh, Frank Warren's birthday is Friday, June 3rd. I'm not sure of his address, but maybe we can get it from the secretary, maybe drop some cards or give him a call. He, he, he checked in with Stanley to make sure everybody's giving him a good present this year. <laughs> uh, Brandon needs some volunteers for neighbors up and neighbors. You want to give them a quick Yeah, I, I think we're good right now. We've got the people matched up. We've got two handicapped rats and one kind of whole house that we're doing. Uh, one's right here in Kimberly's, one's out uh, towards like the water plant, and one's out towards my house. So pretty good range, but uh, we'll meet here at 7.30 Friday morning just for a real quick breakfast. We don't have a full-blown breakfast like we normally do, but somebody volunteered to do some stuff. I think Esther volunteered to bring a few things for breakfast, and then bring your drinks and your lunch and everything. We don't have that this year. All right. Thanks everybody for the help. Um, for the youth breakfasts in uh, June, Cal, Spencer, and Mary Page are going to take the first two weeks, but we do need somebody to do the breakfast June 19th and 26th. Anybody willing to do that, please reach out to Cal or myself. <laughs> Very nice to have Charlotte Sears back. He's out of his neck brace and doing about that. that. Everything recovering good, Charlotte? Yeah, I guess so. You get back on the golf course, say. And uh, we're just real thankful for the confirmation Sunday. Turn it over to Pastor Kay. I'm mighty glad to have Tommy Height back with us today as well to see three of his grandchildren confirmed. Absolutely. And this one? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to keep the uh, Morris Hudson, Randall Hudson family in your prayers. Uh, Randall is on life support and they have said there's no, nothing else they can do, so it's up to his brother to make the decision to um, cut it off. And so it's a really tough time right now for them. So please keep their family in their prayers. Sure. Congrats to all the graduates. We had a wonderful ceremony last week. I know some of you graduated this weekend, some of them next weekend. So keep the celebrations going. Absolutely. One more announcement for my parents. Um, they have changed their mind not to relocate themselves. So it was, um, we have, my, my siblings and I, we have been negotiating them not to for the past one year. But they just, they purchased their new apartment and I just, when I was in grade, I just accompanied them to check out the final inspection to the new place. And, and this past week, they just, just told us that we decide not to. So, that's <laughs> just good news for us and I'm feeling so. And thank you for your and thank you for your support. Any other announcements? Yeah. yeah. All right. Please join me in our opening prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day as we worship you and celebrate your day together. Gracious Lord, Lord, before we start our worship, we want to pray for those who courageously laid down their lives for their cause of freedom. May the examples of their sacrifice inspire in us the selfless love of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And you bless the families of our fallen troops and fill their homes and their lives with your strength and peace. And also we want to lift up our youth as they prepare their professional faith it is such a great joy and excitement to be able to celebrate their new faith journey with us today. May you touch each person's heart and send your spirit upon them as they commit their lives to your Lord. We pray in your Son's name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us rise and meet our Creator. Let us raise our hands and voices in acknowledgement that God's Holy Spirit moves among us, calling us to new life in Christ. Doing our activation.
our voices in praise to you. Hear our words of praise. O Lord, we proclaim our faith in you alone. Let the name of Jesus fight our hearts. O Lord, we declare before the word that you are our Savior. Let us join our voices together in our worship. Amen. Opening this morning is 496, Sweet Hour Prayer. Pharisees wanted them to bring one cup of flour. 
as an offering. However, during the days, most people were poor and they worked hard all day long so they couldn't follow and obey such laws. Then contrary, the Pharisees were rich and they had time to obey their own laws and they, and they blamed others for not being able to obey the little laws. So Jesus quoted the Pharisees for making a big show of how they worshipped and how they often they went to the temple. <coughs> also during these days, Jews wore little boxes strapped to their forehead with a band of a cloth. It was called phylactery. <laughs> and it contained <coughs> scriptures written on little pieces of paper. The reason they had this was to remind themselves God is with them and to keep the laws during their, during their daily lives. So the Pharisees also were deeds boxes. But their reason for this was a little different. They, they just wore this to make them more noticeable to others. And they wore this threshold with very long fringes so that people would notice them and admire them. The problem, the problem with all this was that the Pharisees didn't really care about the impressing God and the pleasing God. They just wanted to please themselves by impressing others instead. And do you think God is impressed by this sort of show-offs? I think God is pleased with the opposite of the off. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. On this day, we remember and honor the military veterans for their services for our country, especially for their sacrifices in love. And the reason we do observe Memorial Day every year is that we know their services and sacrifices will not show off. They didn't serve our country to impress others or to make them noisy. Instead, they served and even sacrificed their life, lives because they loved their people and their land. They humbled themselves and lived out their love by their service. This is why we honor them and remember them. That is very similar to our faith and our love to God wants us to follow Him and serve Him willingly. Just because we love Him. Not because we want others to see the good things that we do. So I hope you to remember, learn, and, and practice the teachings of Jesus, and as well as the examples of our military veterans, love and sacrifice to our country. Pray, pray. Dear Jesus, Thanks for teaching us why and how to serve you and how to love others. And thank you for giving us the great people who serve our country and who are in service for us now with sacrifices and love. We're so grateful for their love and service and we honor their commitment to our country. So help us to remember them and respect their genuine lives. Also, I ask you to give our children your wisdom to understand the true love and true service. May you grant them all faith in following and serving you back with your grace and love. Thank you, Lord, as God. We love you so much. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to a prayer for illumination. Let's pray together. Holy God, the voice is heard in the thunder and in the silence. Speak to us now by the power of your Spirit that we may hear your word for us today. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from your, yourselves, 
It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. The second scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 to 10. But he, Jesus, said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I'll boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in inserts, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And I see God. Pray with me. Gracious and ever living God, we give you thanks for your amazing grace to strengthen us and to continue to remain in your spirit. We are thankful for this time of listening to your heart. This moment I pray that you fill us with your wisdom to understand you better. And you grant us faith so we may fully live and fully follow your words. Make the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts acceptable to you and pleasing in your sight. Our Redeemer, our peace. Today is Confirmation Sunday, and as preparing for today's sermon, the first word came to my mind is grace. To me, teaching our youth about our Christian faith and our faith traditions, and inviting, inviting them into a new faith journey in their lives are unbelievably, you know, unbelievable grace, an amazing experience by God's grace. I give them credit, and they give credit. And I believe God intended to find grace. And the Spirit of God led us to this day to embark on their new spiritual journey as a self-professing member of Cambridge Community of Faith. So, as we celebrate new professions of faith with our youth, I think it's proper for us to revisit and meditate on the core of our Methodist faith, that is our faith in God's grace. Our denomination shares, shares basic Christian affirmations with other churches and other denominations. But I think our understandings of grace and salvation are very special and unique. First of all, it is grace. What is, what is grace? If somebody raises this question to you, you can simply answer, grace is God's undeserved and unmerited love towards us. This is a simple answer for their question. God loves us first, even when we do not know God, and even when we are yet sinners. God has no obligation to love us. But still, God loves us first in God's freedom. This loving action of God among us is grace. And by His grace, God opens the way of salvation, in which we become God's children through our faith in Jesus Christ. Today's reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 say, For by grace, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, that the result of works, so that no one may boast. As Christians, we accept this as the truth of our lives, and we are ever grateful to God for this grace. Although all Christians may believe in this basic truth, in Christian history, people have debated on God's grace and salvation for better and more detailed understandings. One of the main topics is the scope of God's grace. Some people claim that God's grace is for those who are selected by God. This is, this is one of the, the perspectives of the Presbyterian denomination. And some people claim that grace works 
primarily within the church's boundary and through its ministry. Very Catholics. But I understand they make their own reasonable ideas or concepts based on their understandings of the scriptures. And we Methodists believe that God's grace is universally available to everyone and pervades the whole creation. Grace is not a God's God an exclusive gift delivered just for some, but it is a God's unconditional loving action to create, heal, forgive, reconcile, and transform human hearts, communities, and entire creation. So for us, the believers of this universal grace, the journey of salvation unfolds in a special way. It cannot be explained by today's popular term, plan of salvation. Have you heard of it? Plan of salvation. Or by the idea of order of salvation. Because salvation is not something that can be laid out nicely in a simple plan or something that is just prescribed for some people. Whether we see salvation as a journey with God's grace, we believe we are on our way of salvation. It is a prolonged experience of grace upon grace, or growing in grace. On this journey of grace upon grace, we first experience prevenient grace. The grace that comes even before we realize we need it. It is God's universal provision for everyone. It is in creation, in natural order, in human conscience. For instance, our guilty conscience, the desire to be good and righteous, the mysterious drawing towards holiness and secret inner searching for God, they are all expressions of God's creating and grace. On our journey of salvation, this grace works in our heart and guides us to the point where we embark on that actual journey. <coughs> the founder of our denomination, John Wesley, described this grace as the porch on a house. Porch on a house. It is where we prepare to enter the house, just like our youth today who are preparing their profession of faith. Today we are celebrating their faith public, first public profession of faith. And a part of our celebration is to express our grateful, gratefulness for God's guiding, prevenient grace in them. However, there is, there is more to a house than the porch. We should enter the house or begin the journey. Then how can we begin the journey? The journey begins by responding to God's call to the journey. And as we respond to God's call, we see ourselves be chained to the power of sin and death. Even though we want to start the journey, we cannot walk, we cannot move because of the chains. So at the moment of our beginning of, of the journey, it is necessary for us to repent. We repent for the forgiveness of sins and for the release from the captivity of death. And at this moment of repentance, justifying grace of Jesus Christ who died on the cross works in our hearts and gives us the assurance of forgiveness and the assurance of acceptance into the new life as God's children. The fact that we become free from the bondage to sin and death and able to start our journey of salvation. Today's confirmation ceremony becomes an important spiritual turning point for all of us. For our youth, our youth embark their new journey as disciples of Jesus Christ publicly, and for ourselves, we revisit the starting point of our faith journey and to refresh and renew. Now the journey has begun, and yet the journey may lead us to a desert, to a valley of shadow, 
And here we be in God's grace again. That we believe that in every moment of our lives, through all the ups and downs, through all the joy and, and sadness, through all the driving and struggling, God's grace is with us, nurturing our growth and faith, and making a better and holier person out of you and me. And this grace we call God's sanctifying grace. We are not alone on our journey of salvation because God's grace is always present in our lives. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are enabled to grow in the love of God and in love for our neighbors. We are enabled to restore the fullest of God's image in which we are created. That we can reach Christian perfection, the holiness of a heart and life. Sisters and brothers in Christ, do you remember your baptism and your confirmation? Through our baptism and confirmation, we are initiated by God's grace into the community of faith, and we started our journey. Today, at the moment of facing the faith of our youth, we affirm that our journey will still continues and moves with them together within God's grace. And on the journey of salvation, they are not alone, and we are not alone as well. We, as one body of Christ, help one another grow more to be better disciples of Jesus Christ. We, as one, as a community of journey of salvation, we celebrate our victories together. And we celebrate our failures and support one another through troubles and share wisdom along the way. Pray and worship together to be holier and witness to the, the true light which enlightens everyone. Are you frustrated with your worrying faith? Are you concerned about your weeping in spirit as you serve our Lord and love our needs? That's fine. That's fine. As the Apostle Paul confesses in our second scripture reading, our God's grace is sufficient for us and for you. For his power is made perfect in our weaknesses. So when we rely on the power of our Lord, we can rely on weaknesses, in inserts, in hardships, in persecutions, and difficulties. For when we are weak, then we become strong because of God's grace. On our joy of grace, upon grace, may God's abundant grace be with us, transform us into the loving image of God, and transform the world into God's reign of compassion, justice, generosity, and peace. Amen. Now we'll be singing our centering hymn 133, leaning on the left. <laughs>
We're here today to support and to pray for those who have learned and studied about the faith, the Christian faith, and now in the presence of God and of this congregation to make their promises of their faith their own. At the heart of this confirmation, there are two distinct but related acts of confirmation. First, the candidates who profess their faith in Christ, confirming their desire to serve God throughout their lives, to come to Christ, and to renounce all evil. Then as, as pastor, I will lay my hand on them, praying that God's spirit will confirm, strengthen and guide them as they strive each day of their lives, to live up to the solemn commitment they will make to them. I believe that it is a privilege and joy as a people of God to hear our candidates' response to God's call and to renew our own baptismal commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ. It will be our responsibility to encourage the newly confirmed in their discipleship so that the Christian family may be built up, recognizing the diverse gifts of all its members. So brothers and sisters in Christ, through confirmation of our faith, we knew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what, is, what God is doing to us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Please join me in prayer. Lord, you send out your spirit to touch the hearts of all people, so that they may believe in you and Jesus, whom you sent. Look kindly on all candidates for confirmation as they listen to your voice. Open their hearts to your spirit and bring to fulfillment the good work that you have begun. As you prepare these children for confirmation, make each of us an instrument of your love. Teach us to appreciate what is holy in others and to be patient with what we do not understand. Deepen our faith in the gospel and help us to pass it on by our, by our example. We pray that you will continue to guide us and sustain us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I would like to present our candidates. Please stand up and you can face him to the congregation to see your faces. I'll be in height. Response is Chris in height. Jamie Yvonne height. Richard height is her sponsor. Parker Johnson height. John height as test sponsor. And Emily Kathleen sponsor. Perry Anderson is her sponsor. All right, you just see, see me. <laughs> you can't it? Look at me. Now I ask our candidates on behalf of the whole church do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power that gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. You confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the Church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. All right, I do one more. I ask again our candidate to bow. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Uh, okay. Those questions are easy, right? <laughs> you may say. And now I like to ask the two 
parents of her candidates. Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace to themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Hello. And sponsors? Will you, will, will you who sponsor these candidates support and encourage them in their Christian life? And now I ask for congregation to bow. Do you, as Christ's body, the Church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life, and include these persons now before you in your care? We will we will be one in this person, with the community of love and forgiveness, that they may work in their trust to God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk the way that leads to life. Spirit work within you, that having been born through the water of the Spirit. 
y le vive en Facebook y sale. Thank you, it was a shortcut. 
but there was a fence and we were stuck. I knew the only choice was to walk all the way back to the football field, the football stadium, and then we'd be back where we started. We still would not be anywhere near our hotel. When we finally walked back to the stadium parking lot, I couldn't even hold my head up straight because the pain was so long. I felt like I wanted to throw up and my legs were tired too. Obviously the pain is not going, was not going away, but I was praying of what it would take to fix it. This happened before and they had shaved my hair, my head, and my hair still isn't right. Plus I had to get stitches in my head. My mom made an appointment and it looked like we were going to walk. When we got to the hospital, they said I would have surgery the next day. I wouldn't want my pain to go away, but I was scared of having surgery again. I prayed that I wouldn't have to have it. The next day, we went to pre op. They told my mom and me that we planned to open my brain and look at my shut. We had to wait a long time. A doctor came in and said, We are waiting on a piece of equipment we have to do for a decompression surgery. I didn't even know this was a possibility. I was terrified because I had heard about the surgery before, and it would mean I would have to learn to eat, swallow, eat, swallow, and talk again. I heard I had the surgery when I was thinking, but I don't remember it. It would be much worse now because I could do way more than I could back then. All I could do was pray that they didn't have to do this. I know my mom was a little scared too. She had to. She said she had to go to the bathroom. When she came back, I could tell she had been crying. I have a strong faith in God, and I knew he would be with me. But I was having a hard time not being afraid. It turns out they didn't have to do that huge surgery. They just replaced my shunt, which made pain go away. They did have to shave more hair than them, and I'm sure it would take forever to grow back. We had to stay in the hospital for a couple days, and then we got to go home. I feel good now, and I hope I don't have to have more surgery. I don't like missing school and having to make up a bunch of homework. I want my neck to feel good, and I don't want to shave my hair. I wanted to share this story with you all because I know, I now know that because I had accepted Jesus, that he is with me wherever I go. When we go to my doctor appointments each summer, and every time I stay in the hospital, my mom and I go for walks inside the hospital. Each time we go to see this big stat marble statue of Jesus. At the bottom of the statue it reads, Come to me all come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. I think that it's important for us to all remember, and no matter what we are going through, that we all need to remember that Jesus always loves you and he never leaves you.
that may obtain everlasting life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the Holy Ghost reads and reigns, ever one God, word without end. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you all forever. Amen. Now please join me. We continue to pray for our families and friends to join me. Gracious and loving God, we come before you and fill it with your presence in this beautiful day and in this, in this beautiful sanctuary. God, as we gather this morning, we thank you for your blessing of confirming our youth and the privilege of walking together with them on our journey of salvation. Especially, we thank you for our new professing members, your beloved ones. We thank you for their faith, and we thank you for their commitment to you, and to your church, and to your people. God, we pray that they will recognize your love, and continue to experience your grace in the next stages of their faithful journey. We pray your loving protection surrounds them each step they take. And also we pray that they seek to lead according to your love, according to your peace, and according to the joy of your soul. God, all mercies have mercy on us. You are our hope and strength, our light in the darkness, and our shepherd in the deep valleys. So we lay down our burdens and voice before you, and faithfully rely on your power and grace. We pray for our sisters and brothers who are experiencing physical difficulties, and spiritual loneliness and brokenness. God, we will not need to work an accuracy, ready to work into Thank you, Lord. I think it comes, and it's great to work. Ron Spencer, Tom Nelson, Tommy Height, Charlie and Elaine Pierce, Trust Vickers, Hayes Buckley, and Teresa Burke, Patrick. And also we pray for Linda Hustin's family. Father, I pray you would go touch them with your healing hands and restore them with your presence. So make them know you are the creator of everything, and your grace is sufficient for their journey. Heavenly Father, I pray that for the victims and their families and practice, our hearts are broken with pain as we hear again of death and despair caused by our mothers. Fathers, families mourn, children live in deep fear, and the nation asks why. We ask, Lord, that you comfort those families wounded by the violence. Care for the souls who grieve. And help us work for greater and lasting peace. And help us to transform our own hearts. To turn from violence. And to seek peaceful ways, peaceful ways of resolving this difference is. Holy Spirit, go before us in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with your unfailing love. We desire to glorify your holy name. Now we take a moment to send ourselves and take step toward our God in seeking for his comforting peace and loving grace in silence. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And let us continue to pray as our Lord taught us while he was here on earth by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord will be in thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we have given us to trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For 
Amen. 